Hearing this now, my friend, you may believe that you're quite safe, perhaps resting comfortably in an easy chair or sitting in your car. But you are not sitting in a chair, my unseen friend. You are sitting in the present. For what is reaching you now is a frozen voice, carved long ago in a digital mantelstone and mortised here at this opening. It's just the first of the many illusions Crazy Dog Audio Theater shall weave for you. In moments, you'll begin to experience a siren song sung on a magical stage of infinite wonder framed by the proscenium arch of your ears and lit by the spotlight of your mind's eye. And it's not the clandestine encryptions which lay ahead or the script laden with conspiratorial Masonic codes or the subliminal messages. And it's not even the necromantic incantations recorded backwards. These are nothing more, of course, than the standard techniques used in every modern sound recording. Compared to what lies ahead, these spiritual traps pale unto insignificance. You see, terms and conditions do apply. You've been warned. Let's begin. If this message reaches you, then you know it's a trick! Oh, Mr. Lizard, I need your help. Crazy Dog Audio Theatre presents The Apocalypse of Bill Lizard by Roger Gregg. That may or may not be true. Get the scroll. Episode 1. Speak not her unspeakable name. You need to speak aloud the words on the scroll of the Seven Thunders. It's unspeakable. It's your fate you have been chosen. Nothing adds up, Bill. We're going to get the scroll! It's in another dimension! <laughs> the time? No, I can't! Because you broke my watch! I don't know, it's that electromagnetic or ectoplasm thing you do. Nothing works around you. Oh yeah? Well, what about the toaster? There's a lot more going on than what meets the eye. Some folks have guardian angels. Some are driven on by demons. Others just have a little inner voice. And me? Oh, right. Can't you hear? I'm Bill Lizard, and I have Cyril. That's ridiculous. Cyril is six foot three and a half inches tall. He likes to wear a herringbone Donegal tweed jacket. Oh, and he's shaped like a rabbit. Yeah, he's a puka, a Celtic fairy spirit. To most, Cyril seems invisible. <laughs> but don't let that fool you. He's every bit as real as you. How do you know that? Still can't hear him? Well, listen close. Beings like Cyril appear to those who jump or are pushed over the edge, like the poets, the dreamers, and the insane. Bill, I'm after saving those. Hear him now? Easy now, Bill. Yeah, I thought you would. I can't believe you filled the safe with these things. Careful, Bill, they, they bruise easily. Carrots! Baby carrots. How'd you break the combination? <laughs> Bill, you know yourself. Doors mean nothing to a puka. Is that so? It is. Open any door. I might. Squeeze through any keyhole. At a pinch. So, all this time we've been locked in here, you could have just drifted through the keyhole and opened the door from the outside? You should lighten up, Bill. It'll do your power good. We can't all be magical white rabbits. Pookas. Ugh. Just get us out of here. No need. Why not? That's why. Oh, great. Someone's here. Should I get it? No, no, no. I'll handle this. You just keep your paws to yourself. Don't I always? And none of your pranks. A bill. I, I'd never... No making those pencils float around. Uh, but, bill, that's the charmer. See, look. Stop that! <laughs> Folks hate that invisible puka stuff. Ah, no, Bill. I'm telling you, it terrifies people. Bill, surely you don't... Surely I do. Ah, no. Ah, yes. But what if... Shh, shh, shh. I'll do the talking, okay? <clears throat> Come in. Hello. Uh, hi. Come on in. Uh, just step over that uh, broken glass and the... Uh, the carrots. Um, here, let me clear that chair off for you. Then maybe I should come back later. No, no, not at all. Sit down. Um, so, what can we do for you? I'm looking for Bill Lizard. You found him. Your Bill Lizard? Yeah. The Bill Lizard. I think so. You don't seem too sure. If you've been through everything I have, lady, you wouldn't be too sure either. You're certain of that? No. 
I can see what they say about you is true. Oh, what do they say? That you've been through more parallel universes than anyone. That may or may not be true. But you do know the unknowable. Yeah? <laughs> oh, Mr. Lizard, I need your help. Hey, hey, it's all right. <laughs> oh, my, she's, she's very, very, very upset. Only you can help me, Bill. And I can call you Bill, can't I? You just did. It's all so crazy. I don't even know where to begin. How about your name? My name? Yeah, it's kind of a key to open your psyche. It's also handy for invoices and things. My name is Mephistopheles. Just Mephistopheles. Uh, so, Miss Mephist... Mephistopheles. <laughs> Miss Belling... Miss Mephistopheles. Miss Memphis... That's funny, I can't seem to say this name out loud. Never mind. It doesn't matter. Are you sure? Yes. It's unspeakable. Okay, uh, what can I do? It's about my grandfather. Have you heard of him? Well, I did just now. He was an artist, a creative genius, a sweet, angelic wizard with supernatural talent. You mean like with his underpants over his tights, traffic cone on his head, that kind of supernatural? No, an everyday miracle kind of supernatural. Well, that's a lot of miracles. My grandfather saw things beyond the human imagination. So he had an air about him. Yes, thin air. Thin air? Very thin. So thin, in fact, he disappeared. Disappeared, in fact? Yes. One night, long ago, he vanished. Oh, could be alien abduction. Hmm. One moment he was there, and the next, he wasn't. Vortex dislocation. Yes. No, you don't understand. I thought he had gone to his reward. Oh, there's a reward? Yes, on the other side. Other side of what? The here and now. The there and then? In the afterlife. But now I know it's not the afterlife. It's the now life. How do you know it's now? Because I got this. Hmm. That's a little tape from an answering machine. Yes. Can you play it? Oh, sure. Here, I'll just uh, stick it into my machine here. Oh, wait a minute. Get the um, top off. The other way. What? Oh, oh right. That's right. Yeah, the other way, the open bit goes towards the bottom. I see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um... Now, press the play button there. Oh, it's the, oh, it's this one, right. It's the red one. No, no, sorry, that, that's the one. I don't hear anything. What is it? Uh, okay, the volume. What? That little thing you slide oh, there on the side. Oh, right. The, yeah, okay, I got it. It's oh. been turned down. Yeah. Someone must have been messing with it. Oh, messing with it. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's your grandfather's voice? Yes, yes, and you see, he's alive and trapped in some kind of infernal dimension of torment. You've got to find him for me. You've got to get him back. I'll do my best. And the scroll. What? Get the scroll. That Seven Thunders thing? Yes, I'll need that as well. Right. Can I keep this tape? Yes, yes, of course. So we have a deal, then? Yeah, we're in business. Excellent. Well, thank you, Mr. Lizard, and... Mr. Cyril. I'm Cyril. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're not. Uh, Cyril's my partner. You're a puka, aren't you? Yes. How lovely. I know a family of equine pukas from Apostasy, Texas. Maybe you know them. Uh, the Nightmares? Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know any mares. I'm a lepus from Tipperary. Ah, oh, that's fascinating. Tell me, can you get pencils to float in the air? Oh, yes. I just love that invisible puka stuff. The way it terrifies people is just a hoot. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this may seem unimportant, but what's your grandfather's name? Oh, yes. I was wondering when you were going to ask. When you didn't, I thought it was because you're psychic. No, I'm quite ordinary. Yes, I can see that now. And plus, I was distracted by your eyes. Oh? Yeah, they're shining. Even through my dark welding glasses? Yeah, like burning coals. Oh, you flatter me. So how about it? So how about what? Your grandfather's name. I don't know his name. You don't? No, everyone had their own name for him. I just called him Grandfather. Is there any truth in what you're telling me? Some. Right. Mr. Lizard, there is something else. Yes? I must warn you. Since I've got that message, I've been followed by two mysterious men. I see. 
They're all dressed in white. All in white, huh? Is that significant? Mm, they could be bakers. Yeah, or orderlies from an asylum. Naval officers. Angels, even. <laughs> oh, my. Angels? I doubt that. Well, you won't be careful, will you? Yeah, don't worry. What? So, we were looking for some kind of grandfather that everybody knew by a different name. A wizard of supernatural talent who vanished mysteriously with some kind of scroll. <laughs> we weren't going to find that in the classifieds. This was going to take a lot of uh, slow, yeah, painstaking... Uh, here, here it is, Ben. Look. What? Here, it's, it says, Wizard of the Seven Thunders seeks private eye for discreet relationship with apocalyptic climax. Oh, what is that? The classifieds in the metaphysical times, see? What? Where? Where is it? Look, look, that little lad there, beside the four horsemen. Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, that's convenient. No better place to hide than in plain sight, huh? Yeah. An hour later, Cyril and I were in the laboratories of Faustus Research. The old doctor appeared strangely ageless. His darting gaze swooped over us like a feverish hawk. Yet there was an empty achiness, or an aching emptiness, in his eyes. Mr. Lizard, I see you've brought the Puka with you. Yeah, this is Cyril. Hello. Hello. A Puka's Hibernian Chimilus in the shape of Lepus Europaeus. That's right. Yeah. yeah, he's shaped like a rabbit. A Puka. Hmm, at a glance, I'd say... Six foot three and a half inch. Actually, 191.7249 centimeters. Oh, well, well now. Well. So, are you... Are I what? Are you him? Him who? Him. Who did you come here to see? You. And who do you see now? You. That answers your question. It does? Yes. How do you know? The same way I know your puka was drinking until 4.26 this morning. Oh, my. While you, Mr. Lizard, had less than five hours sleep and will be remembered, if at all, not as a lost or violent soul, but only as a man who hides his fear of intimacy behind his fixation with two-tone footwear. Yeah, these shoes are great. Your favorite color is red, though you publicly say blue. You are left-handed. Had a Danish for breakfast, the puka, as usual, drank his. Hey, that's pretty good. Mm, now that's wizardry, yes. So about your ad in the paper. You need to speak aloud the words on the scroll of the seven thunders. Do I? It's your fate you have been chosen. I have? He has. I've always known that in the end it'd be someone just like you. Just like me? Well, no, not just like you. In fact, actually, you. Actually me? Your arrival was inevitable, ever since I signed that contract. <laughs> that infernal contract. Is a contract. So it seems. Long, long ago I sealed a pact. A deal? An exchange. A trade? Yes. I gained to the world power, intelligence, groupies, free cable. Oh, free cable. So you are a wizard. <laughs> wizard, magician, sorcerer, scientist, I've been called them all. So you are very creative. And old. I have fabricated the greatest false dawns of the ages. Alchemy, astrology, phrenology, manifest destiny, mood rings, feminist ethics. <laughs> oh, they're so funny. This was all just a joke to you? Believe me, there is no greater delight than watching intellectual clowns wrestling with nonsensical finger pulls in the warped circus mirrors of distorted Weltschwanz. Oh, that's poetic. So, what's your angle then? Setting the great minds to chase their tails in an endless tautological circle jerk has left me free to create. So you do create then? Yes. I have given thousands of creations to humankind, chlorine gas, dioxin, cigarettes, Windows 95, and this thing here. I haven't even named it yet. One billionth of a gram, and goodbye, Rhode Island. So it was yourself behind all that? Not behind. Ahead. Ahead? I was ahead of it all. How come we've never heard of you? He's gone by many names, remember? I've shunned the limelight since the dark day I isolated Pastiorella pestis. What's that? It's a toxic bacterium. You mean like germs? Yes, a special germ. Ooh, special. Yes, I found it on fleas carried by Rattus Rattus. The black rat? Indeed. Back then, I had to have them specially imported. Very resourceful creatures, black rats. They gnaw through anything. Oh my, oh my. Yes, regrettable, but I've learned I've done pretty well since then, if you don't count the meltdowns and the killer bees. Okay, if you're this grandfather we're looking for, 
Then where's this scroll? Do you play billiards, Mr. Lizard? No social pleasures for our bill. Well, I, I don't relate well. Follow me to this table. Stick in the mud. It's a pity you don't play. Ah, well. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that every cause has a knock-on effect. You see, one event impacts on another, forming the great chain of causality. Like these balls here? Precisely. The trajectory of one determines the course of another. Oh, good shot. Thank you. Everything in our universe is on such a table. We're on a table? We course through our lives, striking and being struck, rolling along until we reach the end. I am trapped on the karmic field, just as you, my contract is due to expire. Any fool can see the signs. A fool sees signs in everything. Yes, and the sign says it's payback time. That scroll. That scroll, Mr. Lizard, has been the certainty of the ages until now. Until now? What do you mean? Are you familiar with particle accelerators? No. The subatomic collisions in such accelerators approach the speed of light. Oh, well, that's fast. Very. And do you know what happens when these particles smash into each other? They crash? They smash? They fall down? There's a big noise. Yes, but the truly interesting result is that some of the particles disappear. Mm, that's odd. Indeed. So the question is, where do they go? I don't know. I haven't a clue. They go into another dimension. So the scroll is... Yes, that's right. Uh... Okay, but the scroll is where exactly? In another dimension. Oh, right. Now I see. It waits for you there. All you have to do is leave this plane of existence and collect it. And how do we do that? By using this. Behold, the Faustian Particle Accelerator. Oh, a bumper car! Oh, it's lovely! Well, yes, the outward design is based on a 1958 Ashbury Park bumper car. Oh, cherry red! Hey, tail fins! Yes, just some retro design features. Furry dice. Those are merely decoration. But the internal mechanics are state-of-the-art. Wow, a giant bumper car! An accelerator. Wow! But not for subatomic particles. This will take human passengers. Think of what it means. An amusement park for grown-ups! No, it means travelling to another dimension. To get the scroll? Yes, that's right. I don't get it. Don't get what? I thought you wanted to duck out on your contract. I do. Well, then why help us? Yes. Because, because it's in my nature. It's a genetic thing. I can't help myself. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't buy into that determinist stuff. Okay, how about this rationale? I'm sending you there because I know that you are so incompetent that you will undoubtedly botch this up. That I buy. Sounds good to me. Excellent. Now, gentlemen, if you'll put on these helmets. Uh, okay. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> Let's get the goggles with it. Oh, oh, look, there's holes for my ears. Now, that's a nice touch. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, slip out of your clothes, Mr. Lizard. What? Naked you come into the world, and naked you shall leave it. Well, except for the crash helmet. Oh, all right. I mean, you're wearing a white lab coat, so I better do as you say. Good. That's it. Now, both of you, climb in. Oh, oh tight fit. Just get my leg under the dash there. Oh. oh, hey, leather on the steering wheel. Yes, it's a sports model. Hmm, this seat doesn't go back. No, no, it does. Just pull that lever there. This one. Oh, hey, look, a radio! Yes, how do you like that stereo? It's nice! What? I said it's nice, big bassy speakers! Okay. Now just sit tight. Systems on. Powering up laser resonators. Where are the seat belts? Oh, no! That would defeat the purpose. When you collide at the speed of light, you must be thrown free of the wreckage. Well, I guess we can forget about airbags. Now it'll just take a bit for the nerve capacitators to warm up. Comfortable? Yes, thank you. Zero. What is it, Bill? Look who just sneaked in. How'd she get in here? It's Miss, uh, uh, what's her name? You know, the name I can't pronounce. Yes, what's she doing? She's sneaking up behind the doctor. Get ready to blast off, Mr. Lizard! Not so fast, Doctor! Ah! 
It's you! Trying to evade payment, are we? This isn't what it looks like. No? What it is, in fact, is quite different from what, in fact, it looks like it is. Oh, sophistry. Ha! Remember who you're talking to. Okay, then. Stay back, or I'll flick the blast off switch. <laughs> you threaten me with your toy. Stay back! Stay back! You know, Doctor, beneath your lab coat and red rubber gloves, you're as much a fool as those two idiots in your cheesy bumper car. What'd she say? Oh, look, Bill, there's the cup holder. Oh, hey, that's handy. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'll pay. Oh, you're going to pay. I just wanted more time. Time, Doctor, is what you're finally out of. Oh, my, she's a stickler, isn't she? Yeah, very high maintenance. Bill, Cyril, turn off that radio and get out of the car. But we're going to get the scroll. It's in another dimension. The doctor has deceived you. He's trying to obliterate you. Obliterate? Oh, that's bad. Just get out of the car. Well, if you say so. <laughs> now, doctor, it's time to go for that little ride to oblivion. Get in. Please, no, no. Maybe I need to take off my welding glasses so you can look directly into my eyes. No, no, I'm going. See, I'm getting in the car. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You mean the doctor is... Going Stay to out of this. Uh, well, I'm just trying to... This is not your business, Bill. This is between the doctor and me. In the end, it ends. In the twinkling of an eye. Yes, okay. You guys stand clear. Let's launch this thing. Oh, wait. Let me adjust the... Oh! <laughs> wow, that was something else. Oh, he's gone. Bill, I'm so sorry. I should have warned you. Oh, it's okay. I just assumed you'd know that the doctor's classified ad was a false lead. Well, I did. Uh, I, I just had to check it out, you know. Yes. I've got more information for you. Oh, yeah? One of Grandfather's names. Oh, well, that's good. Yes. The name is Gabriel Angeli. Angeli? Yes, he worked as an artist. You'll find out more here. Read this. Hmm. A natural fictional science convention. Right. Be careful, Bill. The men in white suits. Are they after you? Yes, they're following me. I've got to go. No, stay. They mustn't find out about you. Hey, don't worry. I'm a big boy. Cyril's a big rabbit. Puka! I must go quickly, but first... First what? First this. <laughs> what is that? Lipstick? Sulfur. What? I can't explain now. You'll have to trust me. Well, hold on, can we just... No, not now. It's too dangerous here. I have to go, Bill. Oh, well, hey, wait. Miss, 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 spell. Miss, miss... Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, wait, wait! Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That was very odd. I just don't understand her, Cyril. Why'd she have to run away like that? She just doesn't add up. Nothing adds up, Bill. Why does she need me to get this scroll for her? Why doesn't she just get it herself? Yeah. She's quite determined. Yeah. Well, let's go. Bill. What? Put your clothes back on. Oh, right. Well, here, hold my shoes, will you? Be careful with those. Those are the nice ones. I'm about to you know how hard it is to find the two different colored polish for those things? Colors, you know, they say neutral polish works for two tone shoes. Sandals That's not true, business, you know. Sandals. Yep. Yeah, I don't like sandals, and you know that. You've been listening to Crazy Dog Audio Theatre's The Apocalypse of Bill Lizard, written, directed and produced by Roger Gregg. Featuring Morgan Jones as Cyril the Puka. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that was very odd. Anne Byrne as Miss Mephistopheles. It's all so crazy. I don't even know where to begin. Michael Murphy as Dr. Faustus. Naked you come into the world and naked you shall leave it. Well, except for the crash helmet. And Roger Gregg as Bill Lizard. No, no. I, I don't buy into that determinist stuff. To find out more about Crazy Dog Audio Theatre's award-winning audio productions, visit our website at www.crazydogaudiotheatre.com.